Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 1. The Bible says, Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah, after that the king slept with his fathers. Sixteen, year, sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jecolia of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Then now let's skip to verse 15. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. I want to read the last expression in verse 15. I want to read it again. For he was marvelously helped till he was strong. If uh, you mark things in your Bible, I invite you and strongly urge you to mark this uh, verse of Scripture, especially the, uh, the conjunction till. But this, this last expression in the verse, he was marvelous, marvelously helped till he was strong. I want to draw your attention this evening to the subject of being strong until we're strong. Being strong until we're strong. Here we see that uh, King Uzziah, which was the tenth king of the kingdom of Judah. If you're not uh, familiar with um, the divided kingdoms, we know that uh, King Saul was the first king of Israel, the nation of Israel, God's people. But we know that he was not a good king and God was seeking for a king that would have a relationship with him that would be according to his heart. And he found that in David. But David was not perfect, and his sins had consequences on his heritage. Uh, one of his uh, sons was King Solomon, perhaps the, the greatest uh, extent of the kingdom, the greatest glory of the kingdom of Israel was under King Solomon. But, but King Solomon had, uh, although he started right, he did not continue right. And after Solomon, two, of, of, two men divided the kingdom. His son, the, son the, 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 the inheritor of the kingdom, was too eager to have power. And so half of Israel uh, went against him and said, we're not going to submit to you. And they found themselves another king and established a second kingdom. And that's how the two, the united kingdom of Israel became divided. And it, it's divided in two parts, the north and the south. And the north was called Israel. They maintained the name Israel. And the south was called Judah because the main tribe that was in that region was the tribe of Judah and a part of the tribe of Manasseh. And so two divided kingdoms, 20 or 39 different kings on, in, in two of these uh, kingdoms after King Solomon and up until the time that they were deported in, in, into uh, foreign uh, countries and were plundered by the Assyrian Empire and the Babylonian Empire. So here we are in the 10th king of the, the southern kingdom of Judah. Unfortunately, as we study the book of second or the book of Kings, one and two Kings, one and two Chronicles, we find that the majority of the kings, both of the Israel Israel kingdom or the Israeli kingdom and 
the Judean kingdom, most of them were bad kings, unfortunately. They followed in the wrong path. But we find that two of them started right and ended right. But here, as we look at Uzziah, we found that he started right, but he did not finish right. Some kings, uh, several of them were like that. Some others, they started bad, but then they got right. But only two started right and ended right with God. Here, as we go back to verse 15, and we, we see this expression that's, when, I, when I, I, I read through the Bible several times, but the last time I, I read through it, this expression jumped at me and said, wow, God is helping. He's seeking God. We see that in, early in the chapter. He's seeking God. He's doing that which is right, and like his father. But he's seeking God, and God is helping him. God is strengthening him. And Uzziah, King Uzziah, is strong in the Lord. And here, the Bible says that he was marvelously helped by the Lord, by the, God's strength, until he became strong. Now there's a parallel portion of Scripture in the New Testament that deals with this same topic in the, in the second epistle to, to the Corinthian church. The Apostle Paul writes about this topic, about being weak and strong. Uh, come with me to 2 Corinthians and we'll look at chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we'll begin reading in verse 8. And here we know that Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Something that was hindering him. Something that perhaps was accusing him, pre attempting to prevent him to serve God. Verse 8 says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Verse 9, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, this is Jesus speaking unto Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now Paul is talking again, and he says, more gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's how God, wor God works. Now, some people, even perhaps some preachers will say, well, we're going to do everything we can to be strong. And we are to be strong for the Lord and, and witness and, and grow in the Lord and nurture and admonition of the Lord. But here it's talking about a physical strength, a strength that is identified with the world's philosophy. How does the world see strength? They see it with muscles, right? Bigger muscles is better according to this world. How do they see it? They see it with money, more money, more power, more strength, financial strength. But they also see it with intellect. The more brains we got, the more diplomas we got, the more we can impress people and have an influence on people. And that is a strength. That's how the world views strength. But how does God view strength? He views it by faith. Our capability or our realization that we are weak and we desperately need the strength of God. And there's no other strength that is like the strength of God, and it only comes from the Lord. Can I tell you that in churches, we have substituted the strength of God for the strength of man. And, uh, and I want to encourage you, this is a new church, and this is exciting. There, there's, a, there's a bright future, and especially uh, knowing uh, Brother Knickerbocker as your pastor, I am, I'm excited to see what the Lord is going to do. But can I tell you this? This church cannot be strong if you try to be strong in your own strength. We have to rely on the Lord. And if we're going to do that, we have to realize one thing. Among all the things that we could uh, grasp, we need to understand that we are weak. 
Do you understand that this evening? Outside of God, there, there's nothing good in us. We can't do anything. It's God that helps us to do it. He's the one that gives us life. He's the one that gives us breath. He's the one that gives us the ability to work and make a wage to provide for our family. Every good gift comes from above. Here we find a tragic, really, verse. God helped Uzziah until Uzziah thought that, hey, 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 look at me. Look at what I've done. Look at my strength. I want, to, I want to look at three lessons from the life of King Uzziah this evening. Uh, bearing in mind this topic of we are strong till we are strong. In other words, we are strong if we depend on the strength of the Lord until we are strong in our own strength. And at that point, we are really weak. Because the strength of God is gone. Number one... Let's go back to verse uh, 1, uh, I mean verse 2, and we'll look at uh, Uzziah's responsibility. The Bible says he built Eloth and restored it to Judah. Eloth was a city that belonged to Israel but was conquered by one of their enemies, the nations that were around them, that wanted to destroy Israel, the people of God. And he recaptured that city. After that, the king slept with his fathers. Verse 3. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years at Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jecolia of Jerusalem. We, we see here that uh, Uzziah, his, his dad, died perhaps at a young age because Uzziah is only sixteen now, and he's in power. And here th the name of his father is given and the name also of his mother. But as we, as we look at Uzziah, we find that in verse 4, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. Interesting. Let us look at Uzziah's uh, circumstance. He, he was responsible. I mean, he, he walked with God. Also, the, the Bible says here that, uh, verse 5, that he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. So he's doing the right thing. He's seeking the Lord. He knows he's weak and he's seeking for strength. And he's finding it. But we see, number one, his responsibility in spite of his circumstances. Uh, go, with, go back with me in chapter 25. Let's look at his dad and let's see what dad did. The Bible says here in verse 2, chapter 25, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. So, Daddy did what was good, but his heart was not really in it. So it was imperfect. Uzziah saw that. And he could have easily gone with the flow and said, What my dad did, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do as my dad did. But we do not find the scripture say that Uzziah followed the Lord, but not with a sincere heart. We do not find that in scripture. So we, we, we suggest and, and we believe that Uzziah was truly seeking the Lord with all his heart. And that's why God made him to prosper. So he, he, he accepted the responsibility to seek the Lord in spite of the circumstance of his family, but not only of, of his family, uh, but also of his nation. We find that the nation of, of or the, the, the kingdom of, of Judah at this point was in, in bad shape. Uh, go with me to a parallel account in 2 Kings chapter 14. 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 4. The Bible says, Howbeit the high places were not taken away, as yet the people did sacrifice and burnt incense on the high places. This simply means that, and, and as, you, as you look in the beginning of the chapter, it's talking about uh, rain, uh, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Amaziah, was reigning at this point, and he 
kept the high places where they were offering sacrifices to false gods, to idols, who were not the true and living God. Uh, continue with me in uh, chapter 15, right next uh, to this chapter here, and verse 4. Save that the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burned incense to, still on the high places. And look at verse oh, that same chapter, verse 35. The Bible says, Albeit the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burnt incense till, still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. So we find a problem. Daddy did not remove all the high places. He walked with the Lord. He did that which was right, but not completely. He was halfway into it. That's why he left those false uh, places to worship false gods. But in spite of that, King Uzziah sought the Lord. So he had things against him, his, his family heritage and the whole nation. They were all seeking false gods. But not only let us look at, in spite of his circumstance, but he took responsibility in the time of the prophet. Uh, let's go back to Second Chronicles 25. Or 26, rather. And we find this in verse 5. We read this already. Zechariah was the prophet. That means that Uzziah was sensitive to the word of God. He knew there was a prophet of God. God was speaking. And he said, I want to understand what's going on. And uh, when we seek the Lord, it's because somewhere the Bible is available. God's word is available and God gives direction and, there's, and it's something exciting. But when the word of God is suppressed, as King Amaziah did, his dad, uh, look with me in the, in the 25th chapter, verse 15. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet. So Amaziah did something wrong, and God is sending him a prophet to warn him to fix what he did wrong. And he sent unto him a prophet, which, is, which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king, this is Amaziah, said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear, why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee because thou hast done this and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. You know the problem with daddy? Daddy Amaziah? He didn't listen to God's man. He didn't listen to the voice of God. But Uzziah did. He did listen. And during the time of, of a prophet Zechariah, King Uzziah was seeking the Lord. What a wonderful thing. Can I encourage you this evening? When we have a preacher that preaches unashamedly the word of God, let's listen. Let's not be hard of hearing because what we'll find out is that God is going to chasten us after a while. He's not going to let us... Uh, uh, despise his word or despise the, the people that communicate his word and get away with it. Well, we need to have a respect. And, and, and we understand that this is not a, an adoration of the pastor or the preacher, but it's an adoration of God because he is communicating what thus saith the Lord and we want to hear what God has to say. Uh, your pastor is not interested in saying and explaining and uh, giving the philosophy of Sam Knickerbocker. He's interested in communicating what God is, say, is saying in his word. And so we need to be attentive to that. We need to seek the Lord as King Uzziah started. He took that responsibility. When the whole nation was going in left field, when his own father didn't do all that was right with a, a sincere heart, he took personal responsibility. He didn't blame daddy. It's, oh, daddy treated the prophet of God like this, so I, I'm going to do the same thing. He didn't do that. He took his own, he understood that he was personally accountable to God. He took responsibility. Let's take responsibility. Number two, 
Uzziah's reputation. Not only do we see his re- responsibility, but we see his reputation. When he sought the Lord, the Lord strengthened him. And we find this uh, all uh, beginning in verse, as, as you return to Second Chronicles chapter 26, and from verse 6 all the way to verse 15, we see the great exploits that King Uzziah did. And you, and you can take the time to read that later. But one of the great things that we see is in verse 15. The Bible says he made in Jerusalem engines. Whoa. Uh oh! Now he's 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 pulling out the big dogs now. He's he's got a city. He's already strengthened. Uh, his his daddy had left a big breach in the wall of Jerusalem, which left Jerusalem vulnerable to the enemies. Well, he fixed that breach. He closed off the wall, but he didn't just close off the wall. He strengthened the wall. He built some tower, and then he said, "All right, boys, I need some I need some engineer here. We're gonna create some engines of war." And as we continue reading, we find that these engines of war were in, in different corners and strategic places on that, that huge wall that circulated around Jerusalem. But he didn't just stop there. He put them in the desert at random places. And you know what these engines of war could do on these towers? They would throw arrows and huge rocks. Catapults. Here invented by the mighty, the, these uh, ingenuous uh, men uh, these men of ingenuity, and uh, they had these shooting arrows and great stone withal, and his name spread far abroad. See, he didn't just strengthen uh, himself and, and the kingdom and his, and his nation, but he did it in such a way that he became famous <laughs> around uh, the, the neighborhoods, around his, uh, the nations around, even into Egypt. And so we see his reputation. The Lord strengthened him. And we know that uh, that's what God will do. When we realize we're weak and we seek him, he's going to strengthen us. Uh, when we think we're, all, we're strong in our own eyes, we will fall. Let he that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Pride cometh before destruction. But here Uzziah is, is humble and God is raising him up. Let us not raise ourselves up. That's the way the world works. I raise myself up and pull people down so that I look better than others. The way up with God is to go down humility. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will raise you up. We see Uzziah's responsibility. We see Uzziah's reputation. Verses 6 through 15. And then finally we see Uzziah's reproach. Remember that conjunction, till. All right. Uzziah is strong. He's got the engines of war. His reputation is going all over the world. And now we come to the tragic part. Verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord, his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. So here we find three things that were affected by the pride of Uzziah. Number one, we find that his vision was affected. His vision was affected. We see in verse 16 that when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. His vision of self was affected. He didn't view himself as weak, needing help from God anymore. He said, hey, I'm strong. I can do it by myself. His vision was affected. But not only his vision of self was affected, his vision of God was affected. He did not respect the ceremonial laws anymore. It was was reserved for for the priest to go into the, the, the holy place to burn incense to God. But... King Uzziah said, I'm something, I'm strong, I can do what I want. I'm something. His vision of self changed, his vision of God changed. I can burn it. I can serve God my own way. Uh Uh-oh. We find the tragic result. The priests confronted them. They gathered the courage to confront this powerful king who had strengthened their 
kingdom. And look with me in verse 18. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth. Uh-oh. You see a parallel there? Daddy, earlier in the chapter, got mad when he got confronted. And here, again, when his vision of self changed, his vision of God changed, he reacted, and now we see why Daddy went wrong. Pride cometh before destruction. And, and let's uh, continue. The Bible says... In verse 19, Then Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. God smit him. God slapped him and said, you're, You don't know what you're doing. And he knew that leprosy was filthy was uh, equivalent to sinning before God, and uh, he got out, and for the rest of his reign, he was in isolation. He died in leprosy. He, he didn't repent. That's sad. He could have repented, and God would have got, made him whole again. But he was filled with pride, and he did not repent. The Bible doesn't tell us that he did. So his vision was affected, but his rule was affected too. It was his boy, his son, that would be taking care of the kingdom while he was in some hut somewhere being rejected from society because he was contagious, he was contagious with leprosy. But not only we see the vision was affected by his pride, his rule was affected by his pride, but his family was affected. And this is perhaps the saddest one. Can I tell you this before going into this point? If you think that you can move forward and reject God, you're going to lose something. You're going to, God, if you're a child of God, God loves you. He's going to take care of you. And he's not going to let you go in your rebellious condition, in your rebellious direction, without slapping you around the face to draw your attention back to himself. And that's a, that's a good thing because that's the loving care of God. We do the same thing with our children. When they do something wrong, we correct them. We chastise them because we, do not, we want what's best for them. We don't want them to go into something that's dangerous that could destroy them. And we foresee these things. And God foresees our future. And He doesn't want us to go off the path that He has trod for us. How much are you willing to lose before you realize that I am weak and the only strength I need is the strength of the Lord? His family was affected uh, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 14. And let's look at the sad result that took place. The tragic result. 2 Kings 14, 4. The Bible says, Howbeit the high places were not taken away, as yet the people did sacrifice and burn incense on the high places. And then we go to chapter 15. And we've already uh, read this portion of Scripture and we find again that the high places, the high places, the high places, they were left. They weren't destroyed as, as they should have been. And then uh, let's go back to Second Chronicles and let's look at chapter 28. What happened? What happened to Uzziah's family? Second Chronicles 28, and the Bible says in verse 3, and this is talking about King Ahaz, this is Uzziah's grandson. Verse 3, 2 Chronicles 28, 3. Moreover, he burned incense in the valley of the son of Enam and burned his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. It's interesting. 
we see a transition. Uzziah, chapter 26, he goes into the temple with pride and he says, I'm going to do worship my way. Then in chapter 27, we find that his son, Jotham, interestingly enough, he, he never got into the temple. He left the temple. He, he never worshipped in it. What happened? Do you think he was scared by what happened to his dad? My dad, he, he went into the temple to worship God and it didn't end up good for him. I saw what happened to him. So he, he reacted to the other extreme. He said, my dad, he followed the Lord with, with a true heart, but at one point he got lifted up in pride, which destroyed him. And so his son was like, I, I, I don't want to risk it. <laughs> I don't want to be any clo- anywhere near the, the, the place of worship because I'm afraid that it, I might do something wrong. And then I might, get, I might get smitten by leprosy. And so he completely stayed out of it, which led to another destructive result where the, his son was one of the most wicked sons. A, King Ahaz, he took his own children and burnt them alive to false gods. I believe if Uzziah had seen all this come to being, he would have stayed humble. He said, ah, oh, it's not worth it. Uh, I, I want to stay, I want to stay low. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want God's help to stay with me. I don't want to take one step without the Lord holding my hand. And so we see Uzziah's responsibility, Uzziah's reputation, but unfortunately Uzziah's reproach. And may it not be true of us that we become strong by God's grace. And then we think, whoa, I'm strong. Forgetting that God who gave us help can take that help away. The Apostle Paul, and I'll close with this. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3, 13, I want to forget that which is behind. Can I tell you, that's not just the bad. And Paul did a lot. He persecuted, he killed, he imprisoned Christians. And no doubt he regretted all that. And he wanted not to think about that. Perhaps the devil would uh, accuse him oftentimes and say, what do you think you're doing? You killed all these Christians and now you claim to be a Christian yourself? And he, so he's forgetting. He's, he's forgetting all the past. He doesn't want to think about it. Why? Because God is a God of the future. God wants to do something. But can I tell you this, that we don't need to forget just the defeats of the past. We need to forget the victories. You remember the brazen serpent? Moses raised a serpent, and the nation was saved from the, the serpents. But what happened hundreds of years later? They started worshiping the thing. And they had to take a, a godly king to say, I understand they're worshiping the serpent, which was a great deliverance at one point. But instead of worshiping God, they're worshiping what God used to deliver. And he broke the thing and revival broke out. (laughs) Can I tell you this? Our victories can become the greatest uh, trap. The greatest trap. It's easy for us to run and seek the Lord in weakness but when God breaks through when God does something great we have the tendency to think oh we made it we're on the hilltop we don't need the Lord anymore we can handle it from here Lord as the children of Israel who who were uh, suffering in the desert and they were dependent upon the, 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 the manna from heaven that was coming down and the water out of the rock but when they got into Canaan land Woo, flowing with milk and honey. Hey, we can handle it now. We're strong. We're not weak anymore, Lord. So we'll let you know when the next time we're weak. Do you understand what I'm saying? We need to stay with this, uh, this attitude of humility and say, Lord, I'm, even when, I'm, even when I, 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 it seems that we're in a position of strength, let us remain with a mindset of being weak, being humble. Maybe 
Next Sunday, this place could be filled up and people would be standing behind looking for a seat. Maybe 20 souls could be saved. Maybe hundreds of souls could be saved. And if all of that takes place, how are we, how are we going to have a, how is it, how is it going to affect our attitude? Are we still going to be, Lord, we need your help. We can't do this without you. Or are we going to say like, oh, that paid off. I invited this guy for about 20 months and he finally showed up. It's a good thing that I was persistent. You see? We think that it's us doing it when it's the Lord doing the work. Amen. He is the one who is strong. We are weak. If anybody comes to church because of an invitation, it's not because of you. It's because of the Lord. We are strong till we are strong. The Apostle Paul said, when I am weak, I need God's help. And then I'm strong. Let's pray together.